they're hungry for more. We're not delicious. Not even a little bit. Get going. No. Okay. Understood. The Avalanche mission's been approved. We ought to proceed as planned. Uh, this is bullshit. What the hell are they thinking? Threats to public order are to be summarily put down. This is what we've always done. Summarily put down. It's a little late to grow a conscience. <sighs> Just on patrol. Don't worry, we'll make it in time. <laughs> We've reached the train graveyard here. Now, this is a part, of course, in the original game was not nearly as long as it will be in this game. In fact, we're going to spend quite a bit of time in the train graveyard. A little subplot goes on here, too. We could get lost in here. This is the train graveyard, all right. A real treasure trove of scrap. Sector 7 should be just past that large maintenance facility over there. I vote we stay in the light so we can see where we're going. Dark, dark everywhere. That it? I do have to question why there is such a large train graveyard here. I mean, the bulk of the sum slums are made out of scrap metal and junk. But this seems a little bit unusual that there's such a concentration of specifically railroad equipment here. It's deserted and kind of creepy. People don't come around here often. And not just because of the monsters, but because of the stories. What kind? Everyone seems to think that the train graveyard is haunted. Those who lose their way out there in the dark of night will never, ever find their way back home again. <gasps> is that right? I mean, it's not like I think it's true or anything. But, you know, it's just... Then let's hurry. Like I've said a hundred times before, there are going to be changes in this game, flushing things out and all that kind of stuff. But something that I wish they would leave alone is kind of the way that they're going to go and portray some characters. The specific example I'm thinking of here is the character of Reno. Now, Reno was in the original game and he did a number of things and he was most definitely a bad guy. He worked for Shinra, he did some bad things while working for Shinra, but he ended up becoming a popular character anyway. The Turks in general are pretty popular characters with the fans. So, knowing very well that these are popular characters, when it came to the sort of expanded story of the Final Fantasy series, they sort of softened his character a little bit. In the Advent Children movie, which I wasn't a particularly big fan of, they portrayed his character as well as Rude and all of the Turks and Rufus and all that as being much less evil. In fact, they fought on the side of good in that movie. And that kind of change is the result of them acknowledging that the characters, the Turks, are popular with the fans. And, well, this is a popular character. People like this character. You don't want to have this character doing particularly bad things. Unfortunately, when trying to remake a story, retell the story, you're going to fall into that same trap too. We don't want to go and portray this character as being a bad person because this character is popular. This People are supposed to like this character. But the character is kind of locked into a certain number of actions that they're going to perform, which may be considered somewhat distasteful. In this case, Spoiler alert, but it was Reno that dropped the Sector 7 plate that killed all of those people. He may have done it on orders, but he's still the one that did it. So, a fan of the original game playing it through this one is going to know that in advance, and... Well, how do you 
soften this character knowing that he is going to go and do such terrible things? Well, the answer is you make him feel bad about it beforehand. I think I just heard a little kid. Did you guys hear it too? Why would there be kids out here this late? What? Then... And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, you know what? I'm expecting the characters to be fleshed out more. You're expecting Reno to be this completely callous asshole who goes and does this without even a thought of regret over the issue. But yeah, I get that, and you're trying to add more to the character. But keep in mind, the reason why these characters became popular was because of their portrayal in the first game. Now, if you go and soften that character or change that character in some significant way like that, you run the chance of, well, changing the character so much that, like, oh, I hated that version of the character. I mean, that can happen now. Fortunately, we didn't see a whole... The rest of the story, you kind of really need do need to see the rest of the Turks' story throughout the game. Because I doubt anybody really liked the portrayal of the Turks during the Midgar section of the first game. It was really what they did later on that kind of endeared people to the characters. So you're not really ruining too much here. They still have the rest of the game to sort of flesh out those characters, but it's kind of off to a bad start. Okay, so there are ghosts in the train graveyard now. In the Keep your cool. in no, the original you game, I if I do remember correctly, and I may not be, I think the train graveyard was haunted, but it didn't become some significant part of the story as you're moving through. You more or less just kind of moved through the train graveyard. You moved a couple of trains here, cutting even with the battles. It should really only have taken like ten minutes or so to get through the train graveyard. And a big part of that, and even though it was like it was earlier game in the series and you had to go and couldn't put a whole lot of time in any particular dungeons, games weren't really built like that back then, you kind of felt like it was imperative that your characters get through there because remember they're trying to get to Sector 7 to stop the collapse of the Sector 7 plate. They know why they're going there and they have to get there quickly. The problem is it's taking so long to get there, kind of the tension of the situation gets lost. In the original game you find out what's going to happen from Cornell and then you drop down into the sewers and have a boss fight. You, you get out of that, you kill the boss and you move forward and you get out and you end up in the train graveyard and then you head over to Sector 7. It was relatively quick and managed to keep the tension up long enough for you to get there and then have the big fight and all that over at the, at the pillar. And all in all, uh, from the part where you drop through the ground in Corneo's mansion to when you arrive in Sector 7's, I don't know, maybe that'll take you 10 to 20 minutes. It doesn't really take all that long. In this, this isn't even the first episode following our drop through. We had another episode where they were running around in the sewer. Now they're in the train graveyard, and they're going to be in the train graveyard for so long that it's not even going to be contained in one episode. So... You're going from 10 to 20 minutes to potentially like an hour, hour and a half, something like that. Take a long time. And that is one thing, one criticism I have to say about this game taken as a whole, is you lose a little bit too much of that energy that the scenes are supposed to have. The information you get at Corneo's mansion and the collapse of the pillar are very closely related actions. Even though they don't take place in the same place, you find out about it, you fight your way there, you end up losing. In this, though, the fighting our way there is just taking so long, it sucks the energy out of the scene. Now, they try to add this ghost story stuff here, but it's not as effective as... I think it's not as effective as the people who created it seem to think it is. You okay? Uh, all good, I think. <sighs> Still in one piece here, too. Guys, 
Seriously? Come on, huh? Well, that's inviting. I guess while well, running through themes, it's, it's a common thing in JRPGs to move through different areas. Like a fire area, an ice area, lightning area, water area, that kind of thing. That doesn't really happen in this, especially considering the abbreviated version right, of the story we have. Inside. So they kind of want to have different themes as we move through. So we have a ghost area here. That's what we're doing. The ghost thing. What do you think? Uh. Hmm. I'm game. Huh? Uh. Uh, but it'll be fine. We've got a bodyguard, don't forget. Mine. <sighs> right? Ghosts aren't my thing. <sighs> You're just being modest. After you. Mind letting me go then? <laughs> Found you. Hey, can we talk? Just for a bit? 